This is a war of annihilation, says the United States. Raqqa is the battleground and the victim. These are Western coalition bombs targeting the fighters of the so-called Islamic State. More than 5,000 hit Raqqa last month alone. An entire city has become a no-man's land. Mile after mile, there's no life, no people. For years, IS terrorised and controlled these streets. Now, hundreds of those who called Raqqa home have been killed by coalition bombs meant to free them. The US-led mission disputes the figure and says that this is the most precise bombing campaign in history. They may be young and their army new, but the men of the Kurdish-led Syrian Democratic Forces are winning. IS promised a new empire would grow here. Instead, the corpses of its fighters fill the gutters. First Mosul, now Raqqa. The caliphate is already dead. Nearby, another corpse rots, likely caused by a drone strike. The threat here is from snipers. Pause too long or a misstep, and this female fighter would have lost her head. Instead, the shot hits the wall to the right. The danger lies around corners and in Raqqa's shadows. IS rarely come out and attack. They hide and wait. There are IS fighters hiding near a mosque. The Kurds throw everything they have at the gunmen. IS return fire. All of this to take just half a mile of road. When all else fails, an airstrike on the IS position that might have done the trick. We wait for the all clear. The instructions are simple, run that way and be quick. But as I get to the end of the street, it's clear, the sniper is still there. He fires at us, but misses. The shots ricochet off the wall by the camera. Oh, it hit right there. The deeper into the city, the greater the danger. It's an improvised war. Here, Arab fighters have salvaged an IS armoured car. Like a prehistoric beast, it lumbers through a ruined landscape. Commander Abu Abdu knows that snipers only need a tiny window of opportunity. Even in captured ground, there's always the risk that IS will appear from behind. They've dug tunnels all over the city. The steel flanks of the armoured shield us through yet another sniper alley. There's a sniper just around that corner, just at the end of the street. We have to be very careful here. This is the centre of Raqqa, the very heart, if you like, of the Islamic State. Naim Roundabout is a few hundred metres away from here. Locals call it the circle of hell. For these fighters, it's critical territory to retake, but it's much more than that, because there their comrades and their friends were beheaded, and there they were crucified. When they take that territory, they say, they will cleanse Raqqa of the Islamic State. But before the cleansing, more blood has to be spilt. One of the fighters has been shot. IS control the rooftops. The men are pinned down. They're almost in panic. They're desperate. Their comrade is just out of reach. Again, an airstrike is called in. This time it works. Finally, they can get to him. He's rushed to a field hospital. But he doesn't survive. 
His name was Nadim Abu Aziz. He was 21 years old. The fighters are exhausted. They've had too many days end like this. We'll keep going. We will sacrifice our blood for our people inside because they're having a tough time, a really tough time. Yesterday, Daesh attacked us with their men dressed as women and there were big numbers, like a hundred. We thought they were civilians and they also had children with them. And suddenly, the civilians and children went to the side of the road and then they started to fire at us. In the 60s, we were inside Raqqa, we didn't see a single civilian. Thousands, though, are still trapped in IS areas. Raqqa, for them, is an ironclad death trap. They'd have to go through all of this to escape. It's not clear who is friend or foe. Raqqa was the Islamic State's Syrian capital. Now it's a city fit for no one. Nathan Somerville, BBC News, Raqqa.